pleasant day it's alicia and i'm here for another bible study today we'll be doing a bible study on psalm 95 let's pray before we begin most righteous and eternal father we come to you in the mighty name of jesus under the authority of the holy spirit father we praise you father we lift you up on high father we exalt your name Father, we glorify you. Father, we give unto you all the praises due to you. Father, we come before your presence with thanksgiving. Father, we acknowledge that you have kept us. You've been keeping us and you will continue to keep us. Father, we celebrate. We know that you triumph over our enemy father we celebrate we know that you are leading the charge of victory father we celebrate because we know that we are your children and we also know that no one can stand up to you and win so we exalt you we celebrate you we declare you our God and our King, you are sovereign. Father, be exalted above everything and everyone else. Father, there's no one who can ascend to your place. There's no one. And so we lift you up. We praise you. We know you are ours as much as we are yours. We are grateful for the oneness. Father, we humble ourselves because we know that we are your children and we are aware of your excellent goodness, your tender mercies, your loving kindness, your beautiful love for us, which never runs out father you are there for us in every situation we're grateful father we come before your presence today in celebration in worship and father we delight to be in your presence. And because we know of our sinful nature, we confess and repent of everything that we have. Father, you know us well. Search us, Holy Spirit. If there be anything that is not pleasing in your sight, Reveal it unto us, but also cast it away from us as filthy rags. We want nothing to do with it. And teach us of your ways, O oh God, that we will walk in the fear of you, that we will understand what your requirements for us are, that we will live a life of holiness before you, because you're holy and you call us to be holy. Father, we thank you. Because you've given us your righteousness, Father, you've covered us with your glory. You have let your mercy and your grace overflow us. We're grateful. Father, you have given us salvation through Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We love you. And we celebrate you. Father, we are aware. We are consciously aware that though we may be besotted on every side, 
by our enemy who wish to be invisible. We do not need to worry because, Father, you know the enemy. You know the operation of our enemy. And you will dismantle the operation of the enemy. Father, there are some times when we are going through so much and we don't know. But you know what? We praise you, Father, because you always protect us. Regardless, no matter how much times we are beaten down, you hold us up. No matter how many times we are being pushed, you hold us up. You keep us firm. So we are grateful. We have reason to celebrate you. And so, Father, we remember at this time our brother and sisters. They may be going through tribulations. They may be going through trials. They may be becoming weary and despondent. So we pray to you, Father, that you strengthen the saints. We pray, Father, that you wake up the church, the dead ones that are sleeping, that have been lulled to sleep because of the deception of the enemy, that have been lulled to sleep because of confusion, that have been lulled to sleep because they do not understand that this is war, that we are in a battle. They have been lulled to sleep because they are ignorant of who you are. Some of them, they are, they are, they are, just, they are just okay. They are just okay with having Jesus as Savior. Yes, they believe in him and that's it. They are just okay with that. But Father... Help them to understand the folly of their ways. That knowing Jesus, that he's our Savior, is nothing if they do not abide and keep his commandments. So, Father, help us to learn and not be beguiled and deceived by our enemy and not feed on the doctrines of devils that try to Give the appearance of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Let us not be deceived into thinking that just pretending to be saved equates to being saved. Let us realize that this is a lifestyle. This is not just a religion. This is a relationship. That this is real life, not just a part of real life, but actually the very basis of our life. The reason we are born, the reason we exist. And so we are besotted on every side because we are in the middle of a war, a war against us to destroy us. And to steal from us. And to also kill us. It's a war. Help us to realize that. That you are the one who keeps us safe from the enemy who wishes to destroy us. And help us to realize we should not make no, no friends. Nor have no fellowship with the enemy. No vile creature that he is and all his agents all they delight in his wickedness but you see them father you see them they're not hidden from you you see them they're hiding but they're wide open in your eyes how you see them where can they hide they cannot hide at all so when they come upon the righteous to take out your righteous ones because we are covered by your righteousness for your name's sake. So when they come upon us thinking we are unaware, you will open 
the way for us to run into you and you will deal with them. You will let us see the folly of their pursuit, that it is empty because you're mighty to save. And so we celebrate you, Father. We, 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 we applaud you because we know not only do you deliver, not only do you uphold us with your righteous hand, you sustain us with everything we need. So as we are about to go into the Bible study, Father, we ask that you fill us up with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, open our minds, our heart, our soul, and just fill us up. Holy Spirit, let us hearken unto you, Holy Spirit. Let us yield to you, Holy Spirit, because we know you are our comforter. You are a spirit of truth. You are the one that teaches us all things. We are grateful. So as we are about to go into the word, Holy Spirit, plant them in our heart. Plant them in our soul. Plant them in our mind. Enrich us with your good gifts so that we can abound and testify of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. So, today we give back to you, Father. As you give us, we give it back to you, Father. We glorify you in everything we do and say. Let the meditation of our heart be in tune with you, Father. Father, we are grateful that you have the ability to be with us in everything we go through good or bad and so we know you're with us in our going out in our coming in that you will keep us safe we know you will safeguard everything concerning us our friends our family everybody that we come in contact with even our flesh and blood enemies that you will speak to them, Holy Spirit. Show them the folly of their ways. That if they don't turn to you, they will perish. Because Jesus is the way. The only way. Whereby we're saved. So Holy Spirit, visit them wherever they are. The ones who are crying out to you, Holy Spirit, give them comfort. Give them a healing. Jesus, I know you will show up to rescue the souls that are calling out your name. That are crying out to you, Jesus, for salvation. I know you will rescue them. The souls that are entrapped by the enemy. The souls that are being tormented. By the enemy. Give them rest, Jesus. Holy Spirit, help them to know what they are supposed to do. Because unless they confess and repent of their sins and turn from their wicked ways and follow after the ways of our God, they will not receive. So, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your wisdom towards us, your knowledge towards us, and your understanding. You share these things with us, Jesus. We are grateful. You open our understanding so we could know your words. Because you said that we should learn of you. And we desire to. You said we should Feed on you and we desire to because you are the word of God. So we will feed on you. 
we will feed on you. We're grateful. Knowing that you will enrich us, you will fill us up, you will restore us, you will save us. We are grateful. So as we go forth today, Holy Spirit, go before us and make our way straight. Go before us and clear our path of all evil and wickedness. Holy Spirit, also strengthen us on our journey. Sometimes we are weary. Give us strength. We are grateful. We are grateful. So, Father, you know our hearts. You know our needs. Whatever I fail to mention, Father, you will grant accordingly. We are grateful. So, Father, we lift you up. We honor you with our lives. We celebrate you. We ask that you help us to fear you and to understand and learn more of you every day. As we go forth in celebration, in joyous exuberance, we are so happy to be called children of God. We are grateful. We are grateful, Father. So we wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, our Savior. King Jesus, we hail you. We lift you up on high. We're grateful. We wrap our prayers in the Holy Spirit's anointing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are a comforter, Spirit of truth. We're grateful. We love you. And we send them up to you, Father, sweet Savior. May they be acceptable in your sight, Father, and well received by you. Father, we are grateful. And we're praying in Jesus' name, the only name whereby we are saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We are grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin. Verse 1. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Yes. You see, the Lord is our God. We are supposed to worship him. We are supposed to celebrate. We are supposed to give thanks always and declare his mighty goodness and excellent grace towards us. See, our Father is so merciful to us in everything we go through that our thanks should be multiplied, right? So when we seek the Lord face, we should not be doing our worship in a drab countenance, like so saddened and bewildered and burdened down and overwhelmed with the cares of the world. Would we have some times when we go through that? Yes, but it should not be every time. We're supposed to celebrate in the presence of our God. Why? Why? Because we know we have already won. You see, a lot of times when we look around us, we see the dismal outlook of life. But that's not our reality, you see. That's not our reality at all. The world may be dismal, but we are grateful. We are joyous. Our Father is keeping us. You see, before we wake up, sometimes the Holy Spirit will put a song in our heart. Why? For us to sing and be joyous. For us to give praise. For us to celebrate. You see, even if you're going through hard times, even if you're facing tribulation and trials, you must sing forth praises unto the Lord. You see, it's when we have faith in the Lord that we can do this, you know. 
You see, because we're not looking at the present situation as it is. We are seeing the joys of our salvation culminating into such a victory. Our heart, this human heart cannot contain it. That's why we all have to be changed, you know. Think about it. We all have to be changed. See, because the beauty of our king, when he return, mm, his splendor is so beautiful and so radiant. And 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 let's let's talk about it. Our mighty warrior is gonna cut down our enemy. What? Even if now we're facing some little challenges, and I call them little because see, they're nothing compared to the joys that await us. So think about it like that. When you understand the fullness of it, you will see why you must be praising the Lord. You will see why you must shoot forth your praise. But you see, our praise is not just repetitive words or uh, singing a song because somebody read the song and the song sounds good to us and we sing it new. Our hearts will sing to the Lord a new song. Joy will bubble forth and burst in our heart. And not just human heart, I'm talking about our heart of heart, yeah. Our soul heart, the spiritual heart. Our heart will sing a new song unto us. See, some of us, we have the words of the songs coming, you know. The Lord is giving us the words of the song. But we think to ourselves, oh, we're not formal writers, so we can't sing. No. Sing your song. Your heart gives you a song. Sing the song. Even if it is a song that you don't know before. The Spirit is giving you the song. Sing the song. You feel so exuberant, so joyous. You want to just open your mouth and sing the song. I'm telling you. <laughs> because... We have been kept. We have been saved. We are victors. Think about it. When you know that, you will sing the song. <laughs> so let's continue. Verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. See? We come in before his presence with thanksgiving. Because we have so much more to give thanks for than we are aware. Every breath we take is a thanks to the Lord, let me tell you. Every single moment of the day that we have been given is a thanks unto the Lord. Every single thought that are comfort to our soul, that are wholesome, thanks to the Lord. Every single thing we're able to do and the fact that we're able to do them well and the fact that the knowledge to do them has not evaded us and the fact that we are not feeling sick while we do them and the fact that we have all our members being functional and the fact that even if some of them are not functional, most of them are functional and the fact that we are not bedridden and even if we're bedridden, we are not spiritually bedridden and the fact that all the things that we can think of and all the things that we even cannot even fathom to think of are provided for us by the Lord. You look around you and you see the splendor of the earth. You look around you and you see the splendor of, of, of the heavens. You look around you and you see the splendor of the created things. You look around you and you see there are so much things to give thanks for. 
You see, sometimes we're so caught up with what's going on in our, our life. Our little life have little problems. Look, I call them little problems because they're very little problems on the grand scheme of things. Yeah? We have been saved from much more than we are allowed to go through. Praise God. Yeah? If we are even half aware of how many times the Lord has delivered us, praise and thanksgiving would never leave our lips. So we'd be joyful. And you see, we're making a noise. We, yes, we are making a noise. We're making a noise. Why? Because we are joyous. And think about it. When you are joyful, you're celebrating. You are going to scream. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You're going to break out in a dance of joy. I'm telling you. Let me see. Let me see. Let, let us say, praise be our God. Praise be unto his name. You see, let us Bless each other with a joyful song too. See, because sometimes it's not ourselves that is so burdened. You know? Sometimes it's the people around us. So we remind them, sing, sing unto the Lord. Give thanks. So what? If it's only one big problem you think you have, look at the other small mercies. That you could be a life to have a problem self. Think about it. If all you can be thankful for and be joyous about is life itself, declare your praise unto the Lord. I'm telling you, you know, if you spend more time being thankful and being joyful, you will see your problem will become like nothing. In fact, you don't even know when they pass because they will pass. Praise God. They will not last forever. So jump into the Psalms and sing and praise and be joyful. If you lack the words to say, the Psalms will have the words to say. Because we have a lot of praise and worship songs hidden in the Psalms. We could sing them for ourselves. We could, we could write some new ones to now. Especially for the Lord. It could be only between you and the Lord. In fact, it's the best thing. When you have a special song for just you and the Lord, you praise him and celebrate. Let me tell you, it's joyful. It's joyful. Let's not fail to bring in our thanks to the Lord. Yeah? Some people think the Lord want money. No, the Lord don't want no money. What can the Lord do with your money? If you want your money, give your money to the poor. Give your money to the fathers. Give your money to the widowed, the ones who don't have nothing. Give your money to them and bring forth your praise. And your thanksgiving. And your joyful noise. That's what the Lord wants. That's what he wants. After he has blessed you. After he has kept you. After he has continuously provided for you and preserved you. Come on now. Praise. That's what we had to do. So verse 3. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Hallelujah. There is none like our God. There is none who can stand up to him. There is none who can be exalted above him. There is none who can challenge him too. Oh. Our God is so great and so awesome. We're supposed to just get up every day and just be going on it. Awesome. 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 Great is our God. Worthy to be praised. I above everyone, exalted, righteous, holy, true, kind, loving. There is no beginning, no end to him. Hallelujah. He is eternal. You, you see? That our God is sovereign is displayed in everything concerning him. Perfect in all his ways. Who? Can bring an accusation against him. You see, we had to praise our God. And remember, he's our father. The best thing. What? 
We are the children of the king. Hallelujah. So, you see, the next time you are caught up in feeling down, and you are the child of the king. Why should you be down? <laughs> the king is on his throne and he cannot be dethroned. Why should you be down? Celebrate and be joyous. Hallelujah. So let's continue. Verse 4 In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is, is also. See? You look around you. Everything was created by our God. Listen. Everything that was created, even the works of our hands. Think about it. That you have idea to even be able to create something. That you have an idea to even be able to bring an idea into being. Let me tell you. Praises be to our God, you know. You see, you, you see when the Lord has blessed your hand and given you an idea that is wholesome. The very functionality of it the splendor of it speaks towards our God. You know? It's a testament. It's a praise unto him. See? There is no one and nothing that can say they have done something without the help of the Lord. You know? Let me explain for you. Whatever you have done, that you can even do it, is because the Lord has given you life. He has given you the ability to think. He has given you the ability to execute what you think. See? At the end of the day, no matter who wants to exalt themselves, they still have to testify and declare the works of the Lord, that it is good. You see, even people who are ungrateful, people who think that they were created wrong, people who think that there's something wrong with them, that they were born the wrong way, that they can even have something to look at to call that they, 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 it is wrong, that they even have something that they think they have to correct, is a testament to our God, you know. And what happened to them all the time? Even though they will not say it, some of them will not come out and say it. But what happened to them all the time? All the time when they go and make alterations, they come to regret it. Because the Lord has made us perfect in all our ways. Beautiful, lovely, excellent. When he creates us, he says, this is very good. Let me tell you. There is nothing and no one that can come and make us better than the Lord has made us. Nothing and no one. Right? We look at the deep places of the earth. Let's talk about them now. They are so mysterious too. But there is a beauty about them. Even though we can't even figure them out. Like, how did that get there? It's the Lord that put it there. <laughs> you talk about the splendor of it all. It's beautiful. I mean, even something that is so obnoxious in our sight to us, because they may be a pest or whatever, but the Lord has intricately designed these things that... Even if you cannot admire the, the behavior of the thing, even if you cannot admire the characteristics and the purpose for which it was made, like it, it, it's an annoyance to us. Right? We have to acknowledge 
the beauty in the creation though because some of these very things when you really study them they are so carefully designed for their purpose even if their purpose is an obnoxious one we have to give god praise even for that yeah think about it there is nothing created that is not there to serve some kind of purpose you know and think about it when we encounter a creature we can be sure of one thing the lord is ready to be praised whether or not that creature is behaving like how the lord had initially created it to be that's different they will have to they will have to be punished if they behave in outer character but the fact is the lord's creation what i'm talking about is his creation we have to admire his creation not be so not be so amazed to worship things no you know not that i'm not telling to go worship nothing but we have to admire the works of our god that he is good that's what i'm talking about right when you look at the mountains and the hills you, you, you have to admire the lord when you look at the rivers you have to admire the lord you know every single thing he has created serves a purpose right and it is for his good pleasure whatsoever he desires for it to be done whatever he desires for it to do so it shall be done you see sometimes we get too caught up in ourselves that we miss the splendor that the lord is trying to display to us for example no two days are alike no two days are alike like you go outside you look at the sun every day, you take a picture of sunset every day, you take a picture of sun, sunrise every day, and guess what happened? No two days are alike, ever. I'm telling you. And that's a beauty in itself. And that's a mercy in itself. Imagine if all the days were the same. You would be despondent, you know what I mean? You'll be despondent. So let's celebrate our God. So let's continue. Verse 5. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. See? The sea belongs to him. There are a lot of people who, they have this, this mind. Yes. They'll talk about the marine kingdom and marine kingdom and marine kingdom. Yes. Yes. The enemy think they could claim and 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 rule over the things of god but the sea belongs to the lord the sea belongs to him it's he who created it yes they do wickedness there yes they do evil there but guess what the sea belongs to the lord what that mean everything the king has created is his You see, if someone go and rob from the king and want to call the king's property his own, does that make it his own? No. The king's properties are his. So, that the thief want to behave as though he's owner, he's owner of the property he has stolen. The folly of his ways. You see why the, you see why the, you see why the judgment come now? You so the punishment has come? You're, because the thief is trying to take what doesn't belongs to him and say it's his. But we celebrate the Lord because we know what the sea belongs to him. So you see, some people have some very interesting stories of being lost at sea and they find their way to dry land and safety. The Lord is who guide them, you know. The Lord is who guide them. Because the Lord knows the sea he's the one who created he can take you see if you trust in the lord you will see some things everything is his so you may find that it's behaving really 
differently than it than, than it is supposed to, because the Lord said for it to behave how it is how it is behaving. You know, He decides how it behaves. He decides how it doesn't behave. Can anybody tell the waves to stop rolling in and going out? Who can tell it to stop? The Lord can tell the wave to stop. And they stop. I don't you understand that when Moses lifted up his rod for the Red Sea, that's what the Lord tell it to do. Part. And the waves could not be going back and forth. They had to stop. They had to stop. They could not continue back and forth. They had to stop. Huh? And they were able to proceed on dry land. Because who created the dry land? The Lord has done it, you know. The Lord has done it. So you see, all belongs to the Lord. All is His. So we could praise the Lord for everything He has created. Everything. Right? Because he can decide whether it works or whether it doesn't work. He can decide whether it will make it calm or he'll make it rough. He can decide. Now, make no mistake, there are people who can manipulate it too, eh? but that they can even manipulate it, that they even have the idea to manipulate it. All their carefully thought out plans that they even have some way to even think out a plan is praise to the lord you know so you see why you don't worry about the enemy the lord is in control the lord is in control so we celebrate we celebrate and you know if you notice all the things that people overly worship. So they're worshiping the sea. They're worshiping the, the heavens. They're worshiping all kind of thing. The moon and the stars. And the sun. They're worshiping all kind of thing. And you know what happened for the next heaven and earth. They don't have it, you know. There'll be no more sea neither. No more sea. No more sun. No more moon. We don't need the stars neither. Why? Because people have mistaken that these things are created and they're worshipping them. In fact, some people know they worship them in defense against the Lord. But guess what? They all belongs to the Lord. And our enemy will be defeated because he's the instigator too, you know. He that is leading the charge. But... Let's be mindful. He has formed the dry land, the earth we walk on, the earth we live on. You carefully examine the earth. Everything we need to survive is here. Praise be to God. He's our God after all. Let's praise him. Carefully formed, carefully fashioned. Everything is carefully designed to work together in sync Science are still trying to figure it out. But you see, they never will fully feel it. They never will fully figure it out. Why? Because it's all from the Lord. And if you're trying to pursue knowledge outside of God, you will fail. Right? Because the Lord is the one who knows why he created what. Right? If we seek after him, he will tell us why. Because all is his. So we praise him. Verse 6. Oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. See? Because we acknowledge him to be creator. What do we do? We worship and bow down. We worship him because he's worthy to be praised. Why? Because he's our God. We bow down to him. Why? Because he's our God and he's our king. Right? We kneel before him because he's our maker. And we yield to him because what? 
is our savior. We also cling to him and love him and allow ourselves to submit to him. Why? Because we are his children, you see. That's why. That's why. So let us encourage each other to worship the Lord, to bow down before his face, to kneel before him in thanksgiving, to honor his name, to bring glory and honor to him continuously. Let us know who our God is, right? And let us be mindful that we do not give his praise to nobody else. Because the praise belongs to the Lord. All of it. Right? We worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? Because what? He's a spirit. Our God is a spirit. Right? And that's why he requires to worship him in spirit and in truth. In truth, because he is truth. Right? That's the only way to worship him. Sincerity. Be sincere about it. Don't just say you're going to worship the Lord because the Lord tell you to worship him alone. The Lord is not going to beg you or drag you to worship him. So like how some parents have to drag their children to church. They have to be pulling them, threatening them, all manner of things. For them to get to church. The Lord ain't doing nothing. Huh? That's not his parenting style. He's not doing that. If you want to worship him. Choose. Choose to worship him. But when you have to worship him. When you have decided to worship him. He has requirements for you to worship him. In spirit and in truth. Because that's how he requires it. Because that's how he desires for it to be. And you can't go negotiating and, Father, what if I do this? No, 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 no. In spirit and in truth. Those are very simple terms. And he wants us to worship him wholeheartedly. So don't just give him half of the attention and then the other half is in something. No, no, no. Total. Right? After all, the Lord made us. He has created us all for his own good pleasure. So we worship him. As we ought to. Because we desire to do so. Okay? So the Lord isn't going to beg nobody to worship him. Not at all. But those who fail to worship him, but those who fail to acknowledge him as God, they will reap their recompense. Because, see, is when we understand that the Lord is the reason we're alive, we will understand better why we have to worship him. In a matter of, oh, maybe we should know we have to worship him. But he's not going to beat us to worship him. If you choose to, that's your business. If you don't, that's also your business. It's just that for those who worship the Lord, there is a reward. And for those who don't worship the Lord, there is also a reward. It's just that the reward for the righteous will be eternal life. The reward for the ones who don't and the wicked ones who gravitate towards their own thing and their own ambitions... Well, do I need to say it? Their portion, their reward is that. Why? Because they fail to acknowledge God. And who is God? Our life. Without God, you cannot live. Or why do you think the enemy, the minute the enemy decided to exalt himself, he was dead? Dead, you know? Dead. Because you cannot exist. You cannot have life outside of God. See? Some people will say, oh, but they're still around, they're still around. 
What quality of life they live in? Look at the filth. Look at the garbage. What quality of life? And the eternal punishment is awaiting. You cannot have life. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about good quality life outside of God. And you cannot have eternal life outside of God. You have to be submitted to God. That, that's it. It's a requirement, right? So let's continue. And concerning bowing down and kneeling before him, every single knee shall bow. Why every knee shall bow? All of us are his creatures. We belong to him. So of course all of us will have to bow. So don't worry them people thinking yourself oh they're bowing down to their own idol will they got to bow before jesus you know mm -hmm. they're gonna have to bow before jesus and declare him to be king of kings lord of lord holy and righteous for sure for sure verse 7 for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand today if he will hear his voice see we belongs to him that's why we worship because we know him that's why we worship because we love him that's why we worship because we honor him that's why we worship we are is that's why we worship see you can't be calling yourself a child of god and don't worship the lord what is that What's that? So, how do you have a relationship with the Lord if you do not worship Him? Think about it. When we belong to Him and we understand we belong to Him, then we will worship Him. Here, see? The people of His past self. Right? The sheep of his hand. We are his. We don't belong to nobody else. We are his. Or why do you think he's so gracious and merciful towards us? Because we belong to him, you know. That's why. We are called by his name for his purpose. To do his will. That he has decreed in our lives. To be obedient to. You see? If you hear his voice, why is it today if you hear his voice? Because he's always speaking to us, you know. The Lord is always speaking to us. Sometimes he wakes us up to speak to us and we're there doing our own thing. As soon as you roll over off your bed, you go grab your phone to go on social media. Don't even say, thank you, Father, for giving me life so I could wake up to say another day. You grab, you grab your phone and you go on social media or grab phone and go on and watch something. That's why a lot of people are forfeiting the promise of the Lord in their lives. It's so sad. But anyway, we are his, so we worship him and we hear his voice because Jesus said, my sheep knows my voice. A stranger they will not follow. Praise the Lord. So we follow after our Jesus because what he is ours. He belongs to him, he belongs to us. Verse 8, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Why? Because these people in the wilderness, they tempt the Lord so much. So much. They kept tempting, they kept tempting, they kept tempting. And they kept rebelling against him and calling all kind of thing and saying all kind of thing. Let me tell you, these people put Moses in such problems. Time and time and time again, they curse against the Lord. They talk up against the Lord. But you see, the Lord is still merciful. Yes, he's tried them down in his anger, but he's still merciful. See? 
So a lot of times you see some people and they are ungrateful. They're ungrateful. They don't have no thanks in them. They don't even know to, to say, Lord, I'm grateful. In fact, they don't think God has anything to do with it. In fact, they will write out and tell you there's no God. You're so foolish for thinking there's a God. They'll tell you it's all the things they've accomplished in the world belongs to them. They'll tell you they that work to, to achieve it. They'll tell you that. <clears throat> the folly of their ways. Because just like the children of Israel in the wilderness who tempt the Lord, they face his wrath. Such is everyone who has, who has ever or will ever attempt to tempt the Lord. Because the Lord is not at your whim. He doesn't, he doesn't move at your bidding. No. The Lord is sovereign. We humbly make our request and then the Lord will evaluate them and see if, if he wishes to answer them at this time. If not, he put them away for later. Then he will revisit it. And what he will continue to do is give you what you need. Some people get despondent and give up because they only were serving the Lord because of what they want. Very sad. Let us not harden our heart. Let us not neglect to hear our God. Remember, it was fair he who hardened the heart against the Lord to let the people go. The Lord said, yes, he allow him to. Hmm. You see? He hardened his heart, you know? Harden his heart until one, one moment when he realized the power of the Lord, that the Lord will destroy more than the elements around him, more than the, more than the animal, more than the fields, the Lord will destroy. He started to get in, his, in himself now to let people go. When what? His firstborn died. And if you know anything about firstborn, they're very vital. Even to an ungodly person. An ungodly person could still love their child. You see something? Very interesting, isn't it? And he rushed to he rushed to go follow after the children of Israel when they have left. Why? Because he started to regret letting them go. Who do you think give him that idea to go pursue him? The devil who don't have no 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 consideration for nobody. And seeing that they were crossing in the sea, on dry land, he don't stop and think, well, if this God is so powerful to handle the sea in this way, let me proceed with caution. No. Hotly pursuing after them. <laughs> if you harden your heart against the Lord, the beauty of the Lord cannot shine through in your life. Also, is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding will evade you. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a hardened heart. Right? That's why the Holy Spirit will knock on the door. If you answer, you answer. If you don't, well, you don't. But you know what? You're going to repay recompense. So let's continue. Verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. See, because... They wanted to see the Lord work on them so badly. He did work on them. You know? He did work on them. In fact, it was for this very time. They're murmuring, murmuring, murmuring. And you see, that's why, that's why murmuring is not good. It's not good to complain to the Lord about stuff. Stop going to the Lord and complain about what you don't have. Look at what the Lord has done for you and give him thanks and praise. And stop going and complain. The Lord does not like it. Cannot stand it. They were complaining so much that they were thirsty. And the Lord bring them out of, in fact, not even the Lord. They were complaining against Moses and saying, why did he bring them out of Egypt? You see? You see why 
Slavery is not a good thing, you know. Slavery, but it's a mental slavery and a spiritual slavery that you have to worry about. More than the physical slavery, but slavery on a whole is not a good thing. In fact, this habit of enslaving people came from the devil. From the devil himself. Have this mindset to enslave people. Notice it. Right? Because these people, they were taken out from slavery, delivered from evil. And they now come in the wilderness, they're crossing over, and they were just tempting the Lord. Tempting the Lord. They complain, they complain, they complain. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Give us water. We want water to drink. And you see, the people who are complaining like this, they were instigators. They were ungodly people. Some of them, they, were, they came out of Egypt, but they did not want to leave Egypt. But they came out because what they had to. Because the Lord wanted them to come out. That's not your place. Why you want to stay there? The Lord is leading you to the promised land. Why you want to stay there? That's what happened to a lot of us in our lives, you know. The Lord is leading us out of the slavery. But we love it so badly. Because we've been a slave for so long. We want to leave it at all. Such is the manner of every sinner that has been saved and keep going back to the sin. So, they were there complaining, we want water, give us water. Upset Moses so much that Moses struck the rock when he was supposed to speak. You see? Moses was so angry because the Lord kept telling Moses, you know, let me, let me, let me deal with these people. And what? Moses was praying to the Lord, please don't, please don't, please don't. They were complaining for this water so badly. Moses was so afraid. That look, these people are going to stone him. <laughs> he goes to the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, these people, they're, they're getting ready to stone me, you know. The Lord tell him, okay, go, go. And the Lord will, will say to him, that rod that you have in your hand, go. But I, will, I will tell you what to do. Yeah? Because the Lord tell him, I will, I will go before you. I will stand there. Yeah? So the first time the Lord told Moses to go there and strike the rock because he was, he was going to stand there. But the second time, Moses got so angry. And it was this particular time, the second time that they were referring to here in this um verse because the second time moses was told to take the rod gather the people and speak to the rock right but moses was so angry he spoke to the people in anger and instead of giving the lord the reverence due to his name instead of making mention of the lord moses basically speak Indicating that he and Aaron was going to give them the water from the rock. Taking away the sovereignty of the Lord. See, the sovereignty of the Lord is not a simple matter. No. We ought to take it seriously. So because of how Moses was angry and the way he spoke to them and tell them, Look, Aaron and I are going to bring forth the water for you. But you see, the rock is Jesus. Jesus is standing there. So he was supposed to speak and then Jesus would let them have the water. 
right? But he struck the rock instead of speaking this time. See, previously, he was allowed to strike the rock because Jesus told him, I'm going to go and stand there, right? But the second time, Moses didn't follow instruction at all because Moses was so vexed with his people and their incessant complaint. And you know what? That cost Moses. In fact, the Lord was so angry at Moses and Aaron. But you see, the Lord did not consume them in his wrath. The Lord just did not allow them to enter the promised land. Particularly Moses, he let him view the promised land, but he did not let him enter. For Aaron, he told him point blank, none of you two going. And Aaron was going to die. But see, he allowed them to go with Aaron up on the mountain. So Aaron went up on the mountain. He died there. He didn't come back down. But you see, that this is what I this is what I want to point out. The Lord is so faithful to us that even when we step out of line, right, He's gonna extend His mercy. So rather than consuming Moses and Aaron before the people for their disobedience, what the Lord did was extend them mercy. So He allowed Aaron to go on top of the mountain where he died peacefully. Nobody saw him when he died but the lord gave them the instruction for his preparation of death because he knew when he go up on the mountain he was going to die because the lord basically tell them and then moses too he was told that you will not enter the promised land you will get to view it but you will not enter it because of your disobedience because you did not trust in me you see because anger is a very nasty thing you know in his anger he did not believe and he did not give the reverence due to the Lord. See, remember Moses followed the Lord for years, you know. So that he came to a point where this could even happen to Moses. It's a very key thing to note that we should be very conscious not to allow anybody to rile us up to the point where we forget who our God is what he's able to do and what he has instructed us to do because in this temporary lapse of Moses it cost him oh how it cost him all because of these disobedient people they were so disobedient let me tell you it's, it's not a wonder you know, why they were so punished you know the problem with the people is the complaint is the complaint I tell you. They were right so close to the promised land. You know? They were so close. They were so close. Like not very far. They were so close, not very far. And they just could not wait. Because see, sometimes the Lord is going to lead you into a promise. Like something he's going to give to you, a blessing he has in store for you, waiting for you long. See, he, he, he deliberately delayed because he had something to do in you for you not to be ill-prepared because the Lord doesn't delight in giving you what you're not ready for. He will wait and work on you until you're ready for it. So they were so ungrateful. Lord want to work on them to show them you must have appreciation for what you're going to get. So endure thirst a little bit. Where they complain. They complain, they complain, they complain. And so the water came from the rock. You see, to prove, and, and, and this rock the water came from is Jesus, you know. Jesus himself, right? The rock represents Jesus. And I want to point out this. The fact that the water came from Jesus, they strike Jesus, the, the water came from Jesus, shows us a preview of what would have happened to him on the cross when the water 
came forth from him. Right? You see, the people didn't even understand that this was a very significant moment. They were just so lost in their vain pursuits. So they were taken out of Egypt, but they, somehow they could not take the Egypt out of themselves. They could not leave Egypt. They were mentally still in Egypt, still desiring Egypt things, still want to enjoy Egypt, not appreciating and not ready neither for the promise to come. Same way, Jesus forgive. Yes, he forgive your sins. He cleanse you of your unrighteousness. But the mindset of the sinfulness is so engraved that you want to go back into it again and again and again. And you know, some people are so crazy because they think not now. Okay, I'm going to sin, but the Lord is not going to see because I'm going to hide. The Lord sees everything. The Lord sees everything. Don't put the Lord to test. Don't try to see if the Holy Spirit is with you. Because you're going to try to see if you're going to try to sin and try to see if the Holy Spirit is going to try to talk to you, to try to tell you not to do the thing you know you ought not to do. Is it stupidness? It sounds stupid because it is stupid. So do not do it. So why we praise the Lord is because we have to remember who he is. Do not test the Lord. Do not test him. You will, you will not like what the result of it. You will not like it. I'm telling you. We have to praise the Lord, worship him, trust him. So what if you're thirsty? Bear a little thirst, man. Bear a little thirst. How many times have the Lord filled you up with his water? Bear a little thirst. So what if you're hungry? Bear it a little bit. He has something better in store for you. You should know that. How many times has the Lord delivered you? Have faith. So let's continue. Verse 10. 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. See? So a journey that should have taken 40 days. In fact, it could have been so much less, but they complained too much. They complained, they complained, they complained. But in a sense, the journey could have taken them 40 days. Right? It could have taken them 40 days. They decided to complain and they'd end up going in that wilderness for 40 years. To kill out all the people who don't believe and leave the ones who do. Their children who do. Right? And the children grow up seeing the mercies of the Lord. They grow up seeing great wonders of God, the deliverance of God. So they believe in they believe in the saving grace of God. And the children were not enslaved spiritually. They were also not mentally enslaved. And though they were some of them were in physical slavery when they came out of egypt they were physical slaves. they did not have that sense of being a slave they were children but they had a sense of being freed why because as a child children are really perceiving that okay i'm a slave because i'm doing work alongside my parent no they don't see it that way they don't see that's helping out the parent they will see the parent being treated differently. Yes, it may impact them, but they will not see it that way. So when they were brought out, they did not have the mindset of their parents. They had a mind now to be grateful to the Lord for delivering them from this hard work they were doing. And they believe in the Lord because they see the wonders of the Red Sea. They see So see, the children saw more of the mercies of the Lord than their parents ever did. That's why... The children were allowed to enter into the promise land because the children believe in the Lord. You see, what am I trying to tell you? If you don't trust in the Lord wholeheartedly, right? 
you will not be able to understand and, and enjoy the benefits of being saved by the Lord. Because a lot of people will say, oh, but I've sinned so much. So what? The greater your sin, the greater the forgiveness, the greater the ministry. You will have such testimonies to share, to benefit the family of God. I don't understand when the Lord save you. It's for you to honor him and give him praise and be thankful. You will have even more reason to be thankful than a person who did not have so many sins as you. So, you see, let us not err in our hearts. Let us understand the ways of our God. Let us get to know him well so we could worship him and praise him and, and give him thanks. And in our times of need, turn to him, lean upon him, secure the rest in him, and watch him help us through every situation because he's worthy to be praised, you know. And if we don't praise him, well, he will, he will rise up the rocks to praise him, you know. He ain't afraid. So let no rock crowd out in our place, no. Let us praise the Lord. In everything, in every situation, in every circumstance, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be praised. Let's continue. Verse 11 and last. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. See, because remember the Lord is who give us rest. And this rest he's talking about was to be a perpetual rest for them from slavery but you see the rest is also reminiscent of is eternal rest because eternal life for us will be eternal rest to a large degree now what i mean by that in eternity we will be you see if you have a problem praising the lord now let me break it down this way if you have a problem praising the Lord, no, you will most likely you're not you're not you're not you're not set on, on being in the Lord's presence for eternity because in in eternity we are gonna be filled up with praise for the Lord because of his excellent goodness, because of his mercies towards us, because of his deliverance from evil. We could not stop praising the Lord for that. No, sir. Mm -mm. Not when the eternal damnation is evident right there. You know what I'm talking about? You think the people who are going to be thrown in the lake of fire will be thrown in the lake of fire and disappear and that's it? No. They, were, they are eternally damned. There will be tormented for eternity. You could actually see them being tormented for eternity. So every time you're going to have a reason to give praise and to give thanks and to glorify the name of our God. Right? We are going to praise him for all eternity and we're going to rest in him and we are going to enjoy the life that we were supposed to have in him. See, you see all the stuff that we're doing in this life now, they're nothing compared to what we're going to do and enjoy in the next because we will not have to worry about working and and going and study and none of that none of that we will have fullness of knowledge the father will reveal to us the fullness of knowledge we will understand the mysteries right it will be revealed to us we will also encounter a lot of rest that rest is going to be peaceful. Right? Here's what I mean. We would not have a need 
to be overworking herself. We do not have a need to be falling asleep every five minutes. But if and when we do, if and when we do, it will be peaceful. Yeah? Because remember, we're going to live on the earth, you know. We're going to live on the earth. We're going to have food to eat. We're going to go about. We're going to wash. We're going to all kind of thing, just like normal. But we are going to worship. Right? Jesus Jesus was giving some insight into eternity and explaining to us that we will not be marrying or given into marriage. That's not what we are going to be all about. We are going to be living the fullness of life. Right? In oneness with everyone and with our Father and Jesus. See, oneness. We would not have to be wondering if we are loved. We will know we are loved. We will be, we will be delivered from the, 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 the nature of sin that rules this mortal body. You understand? So if we cannot have an appreciation for the Lord from now, if we do not like worshiping the Lord now, if we cannot say no to sin now, then what? If you cannot do without that sinful habit now, then what? You're basically telling the Lord that you cannot live eternity, you know? Because in eternity, you will not have access to your sin. You will not be having access to your rum battle. You will, not have, you will not have access to your gambling habit. You will not have access to all the sexual partners you want to have. You will not have access to all this witchcraft and, and rubbish and evil. You will not have access to all these things that you want to eye and steal. You will not have access to none of those things. There will be nothing there for you to work on still. Why? Because the Lord gives everything. In fact, the things that are precious here in this life, they're not precious there at all. So, what I can tell you, let us not invite the wrath of God upon us because the wrath of God, when it's poured out, is going to be poured out without measure. And those on whom it's poured out and they will have no rest. So the Lord said, they will not enter into his rest. They will have no rest. No peace. At all. God be praised. No? God be praised. So we will enter into the rest and we will enjoy his rest because of his goodness, his namesake. We're grateful. So... As we go throughout today, let us let us praise the Lord. Let us rejoice. Let us be joyous before our God. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and celebrate, knowing who we are, who our God is, having an understanding of who He is, right? So that we could live for Him to the fullest and look forward to being with Him forever because that's what it's all about okay so let's pray most righteous and eternal father we come to you in the mighty name of jesus under the authority of the holy spirit father we love you we honor you we praise you we worship you we magnify your name we celebrate you we applaud you all glory all honor all dominion all power be unto you, Father. Father, because you are mighty. You, ancient of days, provider, keeper, defender, or companion for all ways. We are grateful. And Father, you love us. How oh, are you love us? We have so much to give you thanks for, Father. And we thank you. We thank you because we are nothing without you. Filthy rags without you. 
So we, we, we thank you. We honor you with our lives. We lift our souls up to you, Father. And we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you. So, Father, we come and we humble ourselves before you in acknowledgement of your mercies. And we repent of our sins. We confess them. We give them up. We want nothing to do with them. We understand that they are not good for us. We don't want nothing to do with them. We delight in your righteousness and your goodness. We delight in your grace. So we ask for your tender mercies and your forgiveness. Pardon our sin. Father, cast them so far away from us we cannot even find them. And Father, as you lead us throughout our time, you know our appointed time, you know the steps, you know the days. Father, help us to realize that we are dependent on you. We are dependent on you. Father, help us to be aware that in every circumstance, in every situation, everything that we may encounter, you are right there with us. Call upon you, you're right there with us. Father, let us open our mouth and sing forth songs of praise unto your name. Let us also... Have a word of thanksgiving in our heart and on our lips to give honor and glory unto your name. Father, help us who love to complain to find the way to praise so we can worship you in spirit and in truth. So we can worship you always in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, in our, in our mortal bodies too. Let us declare that you are God. We are your people. So Father, as we go through today, bring back to our remembrance your words. Let us meditate upon your words. Let us be filled up with the wisdom of your words and understanding thereof. Holy Spirit, be with us. We want you to fill us up too. We are grateful. Father, embolden us to the authority of those who embolden us to walk forth in you, embolden us to know who we are. Help us by extension to know who you are. Because if we don't know who you are, we are bankrupt. So, Father, as we go forth in our going out in our coming in, be with us, Father. We are grateful. We are grateful. Father, we leave the enemy to you. We know you will deal with the enemy. We are grateful. Father, let us celebrate today and every single day in our hearts. We're grateful. Father, we honor you. Jesus, we crown you. Jesus, we hail you. Jesus, we glorify you. We honor you with our lives. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Father, we can do nothing without you. We're grateful. Collectively, we are thankful, God. Grateful. So as we go forth, we wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We anoint our prayers with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we send them up for you, Father, sweet Savior. May they be acceptable in your sight, Father. We know that you will grant us your good gifts and perfect gifts. Father, we thank you. We love you more than our gifts. We thank you. Father, as we go for today, be with us continually. Let us know you are there. We pray in Jesus' name, the only name. Amen. Let's go for it. Remember to be joyful today. Sing, sing, sing unto the Lord. <laughs> Peace be unto you. As Jesus gives, so let's receive. 
All the best for today. Love you.